Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. Um, the first thing I want to say, I don't care what political party you belong to. By now, if anybody has any amount of sense, you know, when politicians talk about raising taxes and lowering taxes, the only people that it really affect is the middle class and the lower class. I mean, everybody knows by now that the people that's in the upper echelon, you know, the top 10 percent, top 1 percent, uh, they avoid paying federal taxes for the most part, you know, they avoid it almost completely. So when you hear politicians saying, we're going to raise the taxes, we're going to lower the taxes, it's affecting you. You, as the person that's watching this video, you as the middle class person or in the lower class person that's looking to get out of debt. So I'm not here to try to tell people who to vote for or anything like that. But I just want to put more of an understanding on what kind of debt this country is in. And the more debt this country gets in, the more the middle class and the lower class will be affected by the debt that they get in. So, Alex, I'm going a, I'm to a throw something at you that might be a little perplexing, but people will look and say, what the hell? Uh, you know, like B.C. and A.D., you know, before Christ and after death, you know, on a calendar. We could, the United States... And of course, the United States wasn't around when Jesus was born, but the United States could spend a million dollars a day since the day Jesus was born to today. And it wouldn't be one thirtieth of the debt the United States is in. So a million dollars a day for the past two thousand and forty something years, two thousand and was it 57 years since Jesus was born? You could spend a million dollars a day and you still wouldn't be in the debt that the United States is in today. So just putting that in the context, I mean, I don't know if you want to pull out a calculator. I believe that's less than a trillion dollars or just right at a trillion. The United States today is in $32 trillion and counting. By the time this video come out, it'll probably be at 34 trillion, but $32 trillion and counting in debt. And just so everybody knows, the United States is not trying to pay off that debt. That's not their mode of operandi, even though that's what you hear from all the pundits on TV. Uh, you personally should pay off all your debt. The United States is not trying to pay off the debt. The United States is just trying to pay the interest on that debt and then refinance that debt and then pay, pay today's debt with tomorrow's dollars and tomorrow's dollars will be uh, less valuable. That's what the United States is trying to do. But in turn with paying off that debt, taxes will be raised and taxes will be raised on the people that don't know no better. Taxes will be raised on the people that believe that the uh, politicians are going to go after the rich to pay these uh, outrageous interest fees that the United States own. And in truth and reality, the people that's going to pay for it is you. The middle class and the lower class balance what's your thoughts on that i remember and you're probably gonna say i'm super young but i remember being like 10 and i think the u.s debt was like 16 trillion and uh i remember getting brought up in class and um like everyone was laughing about it but it's crazy because like ten, me being 10, that was 15 years ago. So in 15 years, it's more than it's doubled, basically. And like, where would it be another 15 years from now? Um, Yeah, it's a it's it's a it's it's a lot of debt. And from what I understand, too, is like there's countries that own that debt, like China, to where if it were to be sold off, it could cause like a world recession and things of that sort. Um, it's a, yeah, it's, it's a lot. I really don't know much to say on like the debt topic in the United States, but I think that it's due to the consumerism in America. Oh, well, I'm not even, well, it's not the consumerism. Well, yeah, it's a, it's a consumerism in America that, but what the consumer is doing it's not the problem. It's what the politicians are doing to fluff it up. I mean, we talked about when they put the lavatories and, you know, they did it with government funds and they did it with private funds. And then the government lavatory in a park that was literally a mile apart from each other 
was about 15x what it took for private funds to build a better laboratory and the park down the street. It's so much fluff. It's so much fraud, waste, and abuse in the United States. And of course, U.S. always want to point out other countries that uh, fraudulently abusing funds. The United States is the number one culprit of it. If you look at the fraud, fraud, waste, and abuse numbers in the United States, just let's just use the military. The, the military lose, lose. I mean, no accountability at all. Hundreds of millions, probably billions of dollars each year and nobody know where the funds go to especially during the the wars of you know the iraq and afghan wars uh u.s taxpayers was paying paying soldiers from iraq and afghanistan who fought in the gulf war and if anybody want to get on here and refute that i'm all for that but i was at the stations and i was at the depot facilities where we was paying soldiers from the desert storm war and operation iraqi freedom in 2003 that's what the u.s taxpayers dollars go to we are the world police the world caregivers the world uh slush fund and with that the taxes just rise and rise and rise and the costs just rise the debt just rise but the point i want to focus on is who's going to pay it back and forget what these political pundits say just follow the numbers read the irs tax code the irs tax code and it won't be changed with no real margin of error that's going to affect this the u.s tax code say if you do a b c d you will not pay taxes or your tax liability will be way less the people who read and understand the tax code understands this that's why the people who read the tax code, which is the people that's high net worth individuals, they pay little or no taxes. Of course, Congress and, and political people use that as, you know, the battle cry or use that as political propaganda to get you to vote for them. Say, hey, we're going to tax the rich. But in all truth and reality, they are the ones that put these laws in place so the rich can't pay taxes. That's it. So if the rich are not paying it the bottom 80 percent is paying it that's who's going to suffer from it rather that's who's going to suffer from it. so i mean things that's in the tax code if you just look at the tax code it tells you if you work with labor you will be taxed more than somebody who used their money to make more money so the only thing that if when i see that when i see that when i saw that i said so you're going to tax me more if I go out here and bust my ass 12 hours a day. But you would tax me less if I make the same money, if I just use my money to go invest it and put it to work and put it in other places, you would tax me less if I just use my money to do the same thing. So the only thing I said was, I'm going to work my W-2 job and I'm going to use that money to make more money. And then eventually that money will make more than my W-2 job and I will get taxed way less than what I'm doing. It says when you buy real estate and you're buying holding, you provide housing for people, you can depreciate 27, you can 27.3 years off of it. So that's what I do. I take my money I work for and then I go buy real estate. Now the real estate money, now it surpassed the money that I make at my W2 job. So now I get taxed damn near 0% on the money that I make. So instead of me sitting here trying to fight the system, I just learned the game and became a part of the system and say, okay, well, I'm just going to play the game how it's played. I'm going to see, I'm just going to do what the tax code allows me to do and I'm going to benefit from it. Benefit from it. That is the key to the game. And But understand that there's no end of the road to the U.S. debt. The U.S. debt will keep climbing from now until the end of time. And the people that will suffer the most is the middle class and poor because the middle class and poor are the ones that, you know, they have to go buy the house, buy the cars, buy all this stuff to make them look rich instead of doing what the rich people do to become rich. I mean, all the time you see people, you know, they get a new job, they got to get a better car, get a better liability. You see, see how crazy? instead of taking that money and saying, oh, I'm just going to keep my old, my old car that I have. 
And I'm using that money to make more money, to make more money. Then the first thing they want to complain about, oh man, I'm just getting taxed. I'm just getting taxed all the time. I'm getting taxed all the time. That's what they're doing. They're coming, they're coming for the middle class and poor. They're not coming for the rich. Because the rich is the one that's donating to the political parties that's going to keep those tax laws in place so that they don't have to pay taxes. So the middle class and poor have one or two options. You can keep being the sucker, getting used, or you can learn, develop, and start doing what these people are doing to avoid those traps and pitfalls of just being taxed and just being barely lit, being barely able to live. Now that you got anything else on this before we close it out? No, we close it there. With all that being said, guys, if you have any questions or comments, let us know down below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and we will see you guys on the next one.